yes, you see, the independence always better than the, the some big corporate sleaze ball. Oh, yes, I do love the taste of my farts. Um, that's the NPC who said that. Not me. Totally not me. Anyways, I did one for Elite, and now might as well give No Man's Sky a go, too. So, the rule applies. List 10 things where No Man's Sky is better, without mentioning any other game. Now, that's where the challenge lies, as it shows how independent and capable the game actually is. So, without further ado... We start off with the first thing that any good game needs to do. Be easy to play. No Man's Sky, you see, since day one has been very casual gaming friendly with rather simple and gratifying gameplay. You are given a first person view, a gun, and that's it. Everyone knows what an FPS is, so they start to shoot things and boom, something explodes, giving you resources that fly at you. Some might not like the mobile slash kid game style in your face attribute of all of this, but you can't deny that it's a little bit gratifying to just collect iron from rocks at times. And this simple gameplay translates to other areas of No Man's Sky too. The fact is that you don't need to remember shortcuts all the time. And that's the beauty of One Man's Law. I mean, uh, this, this, this game. It's simple. Some of you may snark at it constantly calling it a casual pleb scrubware. Ah, but you makes you're the only one saying that. No, oh, shut up, Bob! Like it or not, if you separate your personal, that is, subjective opinions from this game and look at it in a more general thing and how others view it, you will see why some like it. And frankly, I too like to fuck around without thinking too much as I explore alien worlds with my space magic suit. Okay, while well, the other part that makes No Man's Sky so unique is the visual style. While sci-fi has a tendency to go fantastical, you know, instead of science fiction we get science fantasy, No Man's Sky just goes balls deep with the weirdness. Creatures are procedurally generated and thus it leads to some really weird results. When these little shits are not yelling in your ear, that is! Ah, yeah, that gets old quick. That's it! I'm gonna genocide your whole species! But you see, until just recently when I finished the main story of the game, I had not encountered these really unique worlds before. Like, truly bizarre creations. And frankly, it was then when I realized. The devs must have been really high on some really interesting drugs there. Oh, and also that the game had something that you don't see a lot in sci-fi. The truly weird and out there stuff. Now, third on my list kinda continues here. See, with all this weirdness and ease of playing the game, sure, it will lead to some Cronenberg-esque adventures. Which it sometimes does, but the fact is that the game has taken up also the very bright color scheme. Well, these days they have toned it down a little bit more, but still. Even friendly NPCs give off that vibe of cuteness and friendliness. Even the wretched sentinels don't seem too menacing. Which, again, is very unlike science fantasy or fiction. Usually the genre has some philosophical message about some dark side of humanity, which this game does in the story, I guess. But on the surface level, everything is so positive and bright. And you know me, I'm the pinnacle of positivity. I will murder your children in their sleep! But even I was taken by surprise how well this tonal shift works for the game. Certainly it has a unique take, for sure. Though it does tend to put off some people, but I say, give it a chance. Not everything has to be like your love life. Oh, and I did mention the story. Now, despite everything here being a text-based adventure, so that now you need to learn to read like some sort of prehistoric Neanderthal in order to get to what the bloody hell is going on, the story is told rather well, if a bit simple. And I, with my distaste for reading in video games, still manage to get most of the story even by skipping a lot of it. Say what's will, but the uncomplicated surface-level stuff that No Man's Sky has, it's quite appealing and refreshing experience when you don't have to sift through Wikipedia or some outside material or run the audio logs just to get what the story is about. You're there with a gun. You mine things, then the big ball of something gives you tech, then you mine better things. Simple, right? And yet, if you dig a bit deeper in the story, there is plenty of it, so don't think that I'm just making dumb jokes alone here. You'd be surprised how rare it is to find a simple yet functional story these days. 
Okay, now there is one feature that did get me a little when I first started playing No Man's Sky in the first version back, back when. And that was the terrain mining, or rather how those old dildo rocks were part of the terrain that you could deform and mine. Yet these days we have terrain manipulation that allows even more of it. See, when I started learning programming, or even before it, such thing as destructible terrain was a pipe dream for many developers. And of course, there were some demos and alpha projects and whatnot else, but no real games had incorporated it well, or at least to a good level. <sighs> well, okay, fine, there were maybe one or two. But the point here is that even to this day, such thing as destructible terrain, even if it is just a few meters deep, still is interesting technology and piece of coding. However, No Man's Sky tends to reset the terrain you had dug up or changed after some reloads or whatnot else. Not exactly sure myself, but I know one thing. Don't build your base in a self-made cave. And speaking of building... Oh man, I'm on fire with these connecting segments. Anyways, building. It might not seem like a too unique thing in the games, but still, having a pretty rudimentary level of building in a game with procedural generation of planets, stars, systems, galaxies, yes, even galaxies, and other assorted gameplay it does kind of raise an eyebrow when you can construct a big wooden penis anywhere on the planet. While personally, I hate building in all but... Uh, two games. The fact is that it's a big draw and a decent time waster. I mean, fun for plenty of people. For No Man's Sky though, this means a bit more as it's also quite functional. I did mention weirdness that this game has. Well, even in real life, the underwater life hosts probably the most alien and strangest life that we know. And I'm right now struggling not to mention that one other game. But what I do have to mention is that it's unique to see in one single game. Swimming, driving, walking, flying, and even space flight. See, managing all this gameplay is quite the task and certainly a unique experience. Of course, you can even build in oceans too, because of course you can. The point here is that not only it's unique to see a game with procedurally generated planets with water and what the else, but being able to submerge oneself, build and explore the depths too, is something you don't quite exactly see every day. Ah, then we have the next feature. Now, come to think of it, these days it seems very underrated. Being able to play alone. Without the newfangled internet! Yes, this game possesses offline mode, or rather, it was offline mode first, despite the liar Sean Murray promising, or at least heavily hinting, at the multiplayer. And then after the whole scandal, actually, they introduced the multiplayer, but I digress. So many games these days are created with multiplayer only in mind, and getting away from it, or just simply being able to play, if, let's say, your router decides to commit Sudoku. Should that be taken for granted? And No Man's Sky will be playable just fine. And if, let's say, servers die? Well, that leads me to the next point. Because No Man's Sky is not an always online game, and does not need an internet connection for some stupid DRM or persistence or whatever, this game also could be archived. Yes, the topic of game archival has become a very important one, and if you watch Accursed Farms, or you know, the creator of Freeman's Mind, the absolute legend Ross Scott, a little shout out there for you, then you know how badly the game archival can get with companies doing these always online games. Even if devs are not complete dicks, servers will eventually be shut down, and then what? Well, some devs might make it just offline mode playable, or give it to open source, but most won't. And then, the game's just gone. Your money spent and devs, or rather the company, just laughs at you for breaking the thing that you bought. Then you start to question whether or not that's even legal. Now, this goes into the topic of piracy too, but thanks to Cracks and Pirates, a game like No Man's Sky, you can find the very first version of the game. In fact, for some video in the past I've filmed the very first version, thanks to these archived versions of it. It's interesting that thanks to this, you can compare the older versions and how far No Man's Sky has come. And all that because of some Yar Har mateys. And say what you will, but I find this part of history very important. Oh, and of course, for legal reasons, I inform you that I have bought No Man's Sky, etc, etc. Here it is on my Steam. Okay, so nowadays No Man's Sky is revered as a good game, and its updates are always great treat to everyone. No, seriously, I haven't seen a game that has so many hits with every update and patch in recent times. <laughs> Weird, right? Especially considering the absolutely abysmal launch. For context, the CEO of Hello Games, Sean Murray, talked bullshit and propagated falsehoods about the game. Many would say that he outright lied about what the game would have, like multiplayer. Which he did! <laughs> no. Will you be able to play with your friends? 
yeah. Is there no, that's that, that, that's it. He outright lied and that's a fact. There's a list of things that were mentioned and hinted that people compiled after this game's launch, but I won't go into it. The important thing is that it was a massive shitfest, a shitfest that no normal company would live down. And it would have been just easier to disband the company and move on. But the weird thing is, devs stuck to it. They kept their fucking heads down and Sean Murray shut the fuck up and got to work. After some time, with every patch, they added things. Good things. Game-changing positive things. So that now it has snowballed into a positivity that even I am interested in happily awaiting the new updates to see what interesting and fun things they have made this time. Both the fact that the company and developers recuperated after what seemed like a death knell situation, and that the updates are frankly so good yet sometimes so small that their positive effects embarrass some other games. Well now that's funny. Oh, and finally, the last thing about No Man's Sky, it's a true game, with no DLCs, no microtransactions, oh my god, yes, and no expansions. No, seriously, throughout this whole time, developers been releasing these great updates by just having good game sales? And not being cunts who try to grab as much money as possible? No way, even Witcher 3 had paid expansions? Ow. I mentioned the game. But anyways, you get my point. No gacha schemes or bullshit that this industry is full of. Now, of course, one could point to the fact that if Hello Games decided to do a paid expansion or DLC with the good stuff in it, even then people would call them out on this bullshit thanks to the horrible launch and Sean Marie's lies in the past, so it's a no-win situation for them. But frankly, I think this is better. And if they continue this good development, I sure will make positive videos about it, people might buy the game and hey, they will continue development. <laughs> What a novel concept. You make even a shit game, if you put in effort and hard work, people recognize it? No. But there you go, that's my list, and hey, if you have your own, do share it down below. Be that by mentioning other games or not, it's up to you. Not like I'll be judging anyone, even though I will. Indeed, No Man's Sky is an interesting game, not only in its game aspects, but also development. But that aside, in the end, of course, do subscribe and all that good stuff, of course. And maybe if you want to support my little shenanigans and so on and so forth, do check out the merch store and Patreon and all the good links down below. Oh, and if you start this game from a fresh start, I do recommend taking a look at the few exploits out there that allow you to amass insane amounts of credits, monies, and what you may have itself. There, there are pretty easy ways to do so, so just look for it. It's gonna make the whole gameplay quite a bit easier.